above zero when power was starting, I think had to do with that. I didn't want to freak. Tired of these masks. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church here in Atwater, Minnesota. Now, I'm singing for those who are at home with your hot chocolates and your coffee and you're still wearing your pajamas at home. We wish you a blessed Lord's Day today. Um, we do miss you at church, but at the same time, we strongly encourage those over 65 to continue worshiping from home, at least until you've received your COVID shots. Due to the bad roads between here and the city, the transition committee will move their meeting from last Thursday to this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Check your email, you can attend this meeting either online or in person. Our council also meets this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Again, check your email, you can attend that meeting online or in person. Our annual meeting is on Sunday next week after worship. Once again, you can attend that line online or in person. We will send out email invites for all these meetings 
for those who do not have your email, please send one to the church office or give us a call. And reports are available on the creative table tonight. Again, you're down asking for volunteers. No, I just want to clarify that I believe we had rescheduled our council meeting for Sunday after worship. Oh, I hadn't heard that yet. Yeah, that was to help you all so you didn't have to come again. And then also uh, after the because meeting. after the annual meeting. Because then we need to do uh, fill-in positions and everything that way. Well, okay, I'll be out. In any case, I'll be out here for the transition meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's coming up on... Wednesday, because they've already moved once, so I don't want to move them a second time. Thank you for that. But speaking of council, we're looking for some employees to stay on the church council, right? Yep, correct. And you can talk to one of the council members about what that includes. I like to get a multi-generation voices, so if you're younger um, and are interested, we're interested in having your voice on council as well. Um, that's one of the joys of being in this time where we have Zoom meetings, even if you're off to college. You can still tune into me back here at home. Okay, Ash Wednesday is coming up on February 17th at 7 p.m. That will be available in person or online by Facebook Live. Starting the following week, on Wednesdays, we'll be hosting our joint midweek Lenten services with Emmanuel. These will be online. The theme is I'd love to tell a story. We're using the Augsburg Fortress devotional for this year. And each week we'll have a chance to hear uh, stories of faith, active, and life. There will also be lots of devotional books for those who are interested. I want to say welcome to Shirley's family today. Good to have you here today. Look, Shirley, did they catch the gift of music? What? Did they catch the gift of music from you? They have it more than me. So. Oh, wonderful. I'm <laughs> looking forward to worship this morning. That will be fun. Okay. Um, and then our condolences this week. If you haven't heard, um, Randy Johnson, Dorothy's son, passed away suddenly, so we want to extend condolences to them. Also, to Shirley, her brother-in-law, Bob, passed away suddenly as well. And so we want to extend condolences to your whole family from our congregation as well. One of volunteers in order, the Zooming for the Thursday noon Bible study. The address was in air. I'll send out a corrected address once I get it to my home church. My home church is hosting that one. It's a study of Luke. So if you're interested, um, that will be coming out by email, hopefully on Monday or Tuesday. The meeting is on Thursday at noon. Those are the announcements for today. I invite you to please stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us, us and know us. You are acquainted with our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven in the wake of God's forgiveness. We are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and a spirit reconciling peace. Amen. Our first song, Praise the Lord the Almighty, verses 1, 2, and 3, 8, and 9.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <laughs> spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to knock and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the 
ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fail exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading comes from 1st Corinthians, the ninth chapter. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What, there, what then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamations I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. 
To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do, do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. synagogue, they entered the house with Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to the deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions were hunted for him. When they found Jesus, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus and Christ. Amen. You know that song we just sang? Instead of the psalm today, eagle's wings. So often, that times that's requested when I'm, I'm doing a funeral service. There's comfort in those words where people have feared that God will lift us up on eagle's wings. And that's what the theme has been weaving through our music and our readings for this morning. God lifting us up. I want to tell you a story. A friend of mine actually told me about this little boy. This is one of those kids who got in trouble all the time. You know the kind I'm talking about? Nice kid, but he's always in trouble. Well, anyhow, one day his mother had had it. She didn't know what to do with him. She had tried everything. Finally, at her wit's end, she grabbed the boy's hand and marched him into the pastor's office. Well, now the boy knew he was in trouble. But he had no idea what it was until he sat down. The pastor dropped his glasses, looked at him over the top. Silence. He could hear the ticking of the clock. And then finally the pastor said, Travis, where is God? Boy called. He looked frantically all over the place. And then in panic, he bolted from the door room, bolted through the door without looking. He flashed by the secretary, he flashed by him. his mom. He ran all the way home and collapsed on his bed. His brother said, Travis, what's wrong? And Travis said, Boy, are we in for it now? 
They've lost God down at the church, and they think we've got something to do with it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't say much for that pastor's counseling skills, but he does raise an interesting question. Where is God? Where is God when nations threaten nations with nuclear bombs? And everyone's saying, you have to back down first. Where is God when a pandemic sweeps the planet? Where is God when the ravages of illness or financial struggle or family situations bring sorrow, anxiety, and pain into our lives? Where is God when our own moral weakness and foolish sin cause us untold problems? These are questions we all face. Where is God? And where do we turn in times such as these? That's the question that drives our first lesson today. After all, we don't have a corner on hard times. Think about the people of Israel. They had said, God's forgotten us. God doesn't care. You have to understand that when these words were written, these people have been exiled for 70 years. 70 years. They've been torn from home and country and hauled off to a foreign land. Only the oldest had a living memory of the promised land, the lost land. As for the young, all they have are stories. And those stories are getting old. What have the God of their ancestors done for them lately? So it's no wonder that Isaiah's words of hope were not being taken seriously. These people had given up. They were brokenhearted. Yet God wasn't through with them yet. All was not lost. So the word went out, Isaiah 40 verse 1, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. In short, God told Isaiah to comfort them with the reassurance that their way was not hidden from God and that their cause had not been forgotten. Basically, what Isaiah was saying here is remember who you are and remember who God is. God had not forgotten them. And God never forgets us. That was the good news that Isaiah was sent to share, and that is the good news that we are called to share. When tough times hit, when we don't know where to turn, instead of relying on human schemes, self-help formulas, and what other, other remedies this world might offer, we rely on the faithfulness of God. We just read an article this week about mindfulness. Have you been hearing about that mindfulness that we're talking about in the media these days? The announced that it's bad for your health, it's causing anxiety attacks. <laughs> we don't rely on the remedies of the world, we rely on the faithfulness of God. Having said that though, how, do we, how does that play out in real life? What do we do when we are up against it? What advice can we offer to others when they are up against it? In their times of doubt and hopelessness. I'd like to offer a four-part strategy. Easy to remember, four words. Number one, remember. You know, when Isaiah talked to the people, his very first strategy was to re help them remember just who God is and what God has done. He looked through their eyes at the stars God had created. 
And then he went through all that God had done in the past. He helped them remember. And we can do the same. Have you not heard how Jesus came to relief of Simon's mother-in-law and healed her with a touch? Or have you not heard of countless people in our day who received life-giving gifts of sight through our surgery, eye surgery? I remember the first time as a pastor I visited someone who had eye surgery, cataract surgery. I may have that next Monday. But in those days, you were in a dark room, your head had these two massive rubber blocks on either side of your head, and you were on your back for a week. Nowadays, if it's, I've been told that that's the biggest nothing surgery there is to worry about. But I'll tell you next week after it's done. Anyhow, when I've seen people give new mobility through hip surgery. That didn't exist when we were kids, at least when some of us older ones were kids. Knee surgery, shoulder replacement, organ recipients. You know, I know literally hundreds and thousands of people who have been given a new gift of life. And it's stories like these from the Bible and from our own lives that give us hope in times of darkness. So we can remember God's help in times of need. How God has helped in the past and how God will help in the future. That's number one. Remember. Number two, give thanks. Thanks. You know, one third of the Psalms are what we call lament Psalms. And they are written by people right in the middle of going through very hard times. In these Psalms, People cried out to God, their hurt and their anger and their pain. Yet in those same psalms, they gave thanks. Sometimes one of the things we have to do is slow down and just think about what's good in the world and give thanks for it. I have a tendency to write down my prayers, especially when I'm going through heavy times, to write them down. And as I'm running along, I'm saying, God, please this, God, please that, God, please the other thing, and go through my whole list. But then I stop and remember. What has God done, and have I given God thanks? And that's why oftentimes I'll go through my prayer book again later and just highlight the prayers where God has answered those prayers. And I want to encourage you to get specific enough in your prayers so that you'll know when your prayers have been answered. Because that will build your faith up. But it's giving thanks. That's something to do when we're fighting our own battles. I had a friend by Eddie who was not far from here. Now, Eddie, if you look at him, he drove an old rusted out pickup. He had bad health. His kidneys were shot. But he never felt a more thankful man in my life. He didn't have a wife, he didn't have kids, all that other stuff. But there was a joy about him. A faith, a hope, an eternal peace with our Lord. You know, in the end, kidney failure won the battle, but Eddie won the war. So, too, even sometimes, though we lose battles, we can win the war, and we will through Jesus Christ. So, that's why we can give thanks for all things. Even the tough times, we learn to give thanks for because we learn out of those things and we become stronger. And better. Number one, we remember. Two, thanks. Three, pray. Prayer is an essential part of any strategy when we're really up against it. And it's a strategy that Jesus used on a daily basis. In fact, he would often just disappear to give way for time of prayer. That's what's going on in our gospel reading today. He got early in the morning before everyone else was up. He went out in the country to decide to pray. So everyone was hunting all over for the place for him. Prayer is what kept him going. And prayer is what will give you the strength you need to keep going when the tough times are around us. If there's one thing experience has taught me, it's this. Prayer is essential to a Christian life. It's our lifeline to God. It's our source of strength. 
That's why it's so important to start each day with prayer. And to keep praying throughout the day. It is essential. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that a day without day prayer is a day we have blown. By that, I don't mean we fail to accomplish anything. But by failing to tap into God's power, we have failed to accomplish all we could have done through Jesus Christ. And that's why we pray. And after praying, we wait. The Bible says, and we're just saying, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now this kind of waiting is not the wringing your hands kind of waiting. It's more like waiting for spring or for summer to come. We know they're coming, even though it's minus 17 or whatever it was. We know spring is coming. And we know God will act. We know that in all things God works for good. And we know that victory is ours through Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever had friends waiting for organ transplants. I have. Several. I remember one gal, she was a 16 year old, waiting for her second liver transplant at the University of Western Ontario Hospital. I remember Hannah, who was in eighth grade, waiting for a heart transplant. I remember Eddie again, or excuse me, Dave. But Dave, his heart was so bad that one day it took so hard out of his chest, it literally crumbles in his hands. It becomes so calcified. We waited and then the call came. The go bag was always packed. Flash down to Rochester. And we gave thanks. Sometimes waiting is hard. You wonder when will it ever come? But hang in there. God has not forgotten you. God knows what you're dealing with. And God's help will come. We live in a time where the question is not whether God will give us a victory, but how God will give us a victory. And for that answer, we sometimes have to wait. Sometimes we see the answer fade out in time. Like when months after months of waiting, the word came from Eddie and Hannah's hearts. That was a long wait. Sometimes the waits are even longer. As Israel learned, like sometimes for nations, it can take decades for things to get back on track again. And sometimes I look around and say, what's happened to our nation? And I'm saying, God has not forgotten our nation either. Even though things are mentioned, if we keep the pace, God will get things back on track again. For God is faithful. So, four things to remember. Number one, remember. Number two, thanks. Number three, pray. Number four, wait. I'll add one more just for fun of it. Trust. Trust the Lord with all your strength and lean not in your own understanding and he will make your path straight. We're not alone. God's will shall be done. God's kingdom shall come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 673 verses 1, 2, and 3.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is the right of God the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. A brief petition, I'll say, let us pray, and I'll say, have mercy on us, O God. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospitals, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim the freedom and release in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects and the grass, cows and the mountain tops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink. For the humility to take our place among all creatures we serve. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. For the nations, for all the leading in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they may find freedom and service to those most in need. Help us, we pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking in supportive relationships, for those crushed by death, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, especially Sean, Trevor, and Lynn, Randy, and Jim, Wayne, Brad, Alice, and Jonah, Joseph, and John, Karen, Frank, Liberty, and Mike, Judy, and Phil. Well, you know their needs better than we ourselves. We pray for them according to your will, trusting in your love. Let us pray. Have, have mercy, O oh God. For those who grieve, especially the families of Randy, Bob, and Dale, that they may be comforted by the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in these times we can't care for each other the way that we are used to caring for each other in times like this, the times of grief. But we ask that you show us new ways that will work. Hear us. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O oh God. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministry centered here, ministries of companionship and support. I am so delighted when I hear people stay in touch weekly, sometimes many times a week with each other. There's Christian love that shares the Christian friendship. For the young people in this place who open us to new understandings. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Mr. God, hear the prayer of your people. Spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Oh, 
Would you rather receive gifts? Would you receive us? Like a mother receives a child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, empower us in faithful service. Attend to others with the same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears. You have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guide us in the path of love and life. In every age, you send prophets made known your loving will for all humanity. God, of course, to in your own time. Our hunger and thirst for justice, which your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your son to preach good news to the afflicted. Break bread with the outcast and the slides, and to ransom those in bondage, the prejudice, and the shame. And I, Lord Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Holy Spirit, of freedom. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise of your prophets and martyrs of every age that rejoice in the hope. For the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to your Almighty God. And so we join with our angels and all those who go before us singing their own. our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on you, your very life, we have strengthened for our sins. Send us forth from his banquet to nourish the body and the spirit, proclaim your good news, and serve others in your name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
the Lord will find your favor and grant you peace. Amen. The last ten numbers, seven ninety three, three, eat on my vision versus one, two, and three. God bless. Have a great day.